or is this is this full time MMA now? Uh, I love full time MMA right now. <laughs> Back to the daily grind and shout out to the full time patrons. Make sure to hit subscribe if you're new and hit thumbs up if you're not a baby back bagel biting bitch boy because you know what time it is. It's full time. MMA. What's up full time family? Had to get this video out before work because we're not actually going to be able to go live before work. We're going to do that after work. So I just wanted to let you guys know um, we'll be going live at about 11 p.m. Eastern tonight. Uh, a little later, 12 p.m. Eastern, because I get off at 10, 11 p.m. So as soon as I get home, get in the shower, we'll be going live and talking some MMA. So I wanted to let you guys know that because normally we do the live show at 7 p.m. Eastern and I'll be at work at that time. So let's get into some MMA news before then. We got TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt verbally sparring over a classless claim from Cody Garbrandt. It's, it's crazy how the roles have reversed here. And there's a saying, it ain't too fun when the rabbits got the gun. Before TJ Dillashaw beat Cody Garbrandt, it really felt like he was the one under attack. It felt like TJ Dillashaw was the one getting his name thrown through the mud, being accused of being a dirty fighter, uh, you know, sparring too hard and ruining teammates' careers. And, and that's what I mean by dirty fighter. I didn't hear anyone actually say in the octagon he was dirty that way, but I'm talking about in the practice room. And, and so with that being said, on top of that, they were saying he showed everyone the team alpha male steroids and all type of stuff, you know, was coming from his former teammates, uh, Cody Garbrandt and the rest of team alpha male. And then at UFC 214, Cody Garbrandt came in and fought TJ Dillashaw and TJ Dillashaw won the belt. So all of that stuff that was being said about him kind of went out the window, luckily for him, because he won. And, you know, people usually side with the winner. Now that TJ Dillashaw knocked out Cody Garbrandt in the second round in a really, really close fight, which is why this fight coming up this weekend is going to be so good because we don't know what's going to happen in this rematch because on top of that, Cody Garbrandt had a little bit of a back injury before that fight. So this fight's going to be completely different. Usually rematches go play out the same way. I have a feeling this fight's going to be different. And with that being said, now it's Cody Garbrandt who's on the end of the attacks. Now you got TJ Dillashaw posting pictures of him kicking Cody Garbrandt in the face on Instagram, talking about, yeah, this little bitch, do 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 you know, talking that trash. Now it's TJ Dillashaw hyping up the fight. Like, what's up, man? Why ain't you talking all that shit no more? Oh, it's because I won the fight. And so Cody Garbrandt, he's actually playing the good guy now. And I don't, I'm not saying playing as in like a fucking act, but I'm saying he's acting like he's all innocent. You know, in, in this rematch, like he wasn't talking a bunch of shit before the big fight. But that's probably because he might have got a little humbled in that first fight. I mean, it's kind of hard to talk shit when you lost the fight. You don't have the belt on your shoulder. Because before that, TJ Dillashaw wasn't the one talking all the trash in the world. When he was the challenger, he was like, listen, I'm not responding to these guys. They want to talk all this shit. I'm going to show them in the octagon. And so when he won and got the belt, now he can talk. And now Cody can't. So it's crazy how, you know, the Rapids got the gun now. TJ Dillashaw's got all the ammo. And Cody Garbrandt's kind of just got to sit back and take it until the fight happens. Face down, ass away, pause. No, but with that being said, here's what um, Cody Garbrandt had to say. He said, he's classless. That's TJ. He's always been like that. Um, he continued to say, that's who he is. It was a classless win or lose. I outclassed Dominic Cruz and I gave him my respect. TJ's up in my face and flexing on my team, acting like a little asshole. I remember every single thing. That's what motivated me this whole entire camp. TJ getting in my face after that fight. If you recall, man, there was a point where right after TJ knocked him out, all of that anger and aggression from being attacked before the fight kind of came out. All of that team alpha male rivalry came out in the form of a fucking scream. Like... Uh, a flex and a scream in Cody Garbrandt's face. He just, ah, like just flexed on his ass after he knocked him out. And yeah, it seemed a little classless, but it's partly because everything leading up to that point kind of was classless on the other side. You guys are telling the world that I've, I'm on steroids or saying to the world I'm on steroids, telling everybody I fucking ended my teammate's career, making me look like a piece of shit. Now that I'm finally redeemed myself and got my belt back that I worked so hard and long to get, TJ Dillashaw. Now, finally, all of that came to a head in the form of me kicking your ass. And, and that's why TJ Dillashaw was so ecstatic and had all of that fucking 
rage after the fight because he finally proved to everybody what he already felt like he knew. He was the best bantamweight in the world. He just needed another shot. After he lost his fight to Dominic Cruz, it, he had to go through two different number one contenders to get back to his title shot. So TJ had to go on a long path back to the title. And on top of that, that whole rivalry was playing out and he was getting made look like a piece of shit pretty much to the fans. And so TJ, of course, he was pissed and and leading up to the point. And after he won the fight, he was flexing. I think he even had some words for Team Alpha Male in the corner. But Cody continued to say, um, I outclassed one of the best champions in the world, Dominic Cruz, who outclassed him. If you watch that fight with TJ and Dominic, TJ was swinging the air and got outclassed. He said it was a close fight, and you know why? He feels entitled. He had a silver spoon in his mouth his whole life. You know what I mean? He doesn't know anything about adversity. Uh, it's always bitch and cry. It takes two years to get back to the top. He said, okay, but you're not knocking people out. I was knocking people out in the first round. That's why I got the title shot over him. And now, you know, okay, I mean, you know how that is. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if the only reason Cody got a title shot is because he knocked a couple dudes out because We've seen other fighters knock guys out and not get a title shot. A, a couple guys that come to mind. Derek Brunson was on like a five fight KO spree. Tiago Santos on like a five fight KO spree. And I don't even think he got to crack the top 15. You know what I'm saying? So everybody that just knocks out guys doesn't get a title shot. So Cody got a title shot for whatever reason. It might be because he was marketable. Maybe the UFC looked at him and saw dollar signs. Um, he's young. Cody garbrandt has got a bright future ahead of him. Um, I don't know what weight class he's going to if he loses this fight, if he doesn't want to be a bantamweight gatekeeper. But if he can win this fight, or when he beat Dominic Cruz, Cody Garbrandt almost started to become a huge star. TJ Dillashaw said that all the way back when he beat him at UFC 217, I believe, or was it 214? I think 217, yeah, 214 was John Jones Cormier. So, Cody Garbrandt's looking to low-key come get his fucking life back with this win. But also, he's kind of making it look like TJ Dillashaw is, the, is a bad guy again and saying that he's classless and I kind of like that he said he had a silver spoon out of his mouth and not because I'm, I buy it not because I think TJ Dillashaw actually was some rich kid with a silver spoon he, he, he might have had a family that had some money but he, he was a hard worker clearly there's not a lot of fucking kids with silver spoons that turn out to be MMA fighters you know what I'm saying? There's not many people that had rich parents, millionaire parents that were just like, hmm, I would like to get punched in the face for my career. So yeah, he might've had middle class parents and he might've had a better life than some of us that grew up lower than that, but that's not a fucking silver spoon. My nigga might've had like a bronze spoon. You know what I'm saying? While we got rusty. No, but you, you get the point, man. TJ Dillashaw, he ended up becoming a fucking UFC fighter. One of the best in the world. That's not really silver spoon type shit, but still it's something new to the equation. And also, TJ Dillashaw responded to this. He said, I wouldn't say I grew up with a silver spoon. Yeah, I was very fortunate. I have a great family. I was raised the right way. My parents did a great job. I owe them everything. Without them, I'm not the man I am today. I don't have maybe a typical fighter story of having to grow up rough, but I grew up great. I had to work my ass off to get anything I wanted. My first vehicle, I had to buy it myself and work to get it. My dad was really hard on me. So just because he had a great family, doesn't mean he was rich right whenever I think about a silver spoon I think about like one of those trust fund kids that never have to work a job in their life they just got millions of bucks and and, and shit like that people that grew up rich and I don't really see that out of TJ Dillashaw but yeah maybe he did you know maybe he was one of those kids at high school with the fucking nice truck you know maybe he did get a good ass job through his dad or something you know but who cares man every it is what it is. You can't hold that against him because he had a good-ass family. You know what I'm saying? That's not his fault. But at the same time, I see where Cody Garbrandt's coming from. Whenever I was growing up, broke as a motherfucker, and I seen somebody who had a great family like that, I looked at them as rich people. I had a, Actually, I had a friend like TJ Dillashaw, bro. He had a good-ass family, and his dad had like a good-ass job, so he, would give, he gave my boy, his name was Bradley, he gave his son a job. And he ended up being able to buy himself like fucking motorbikes, you know what I'm saying? Them dirt bikes and shit he would ride on and all. That was some rich people shit to me, but he was working for it. Homie was out there working in the sun with his dad. His dad gave him a job and he got a good job. So yeah, he, he might have had a better life than us, but that don't mean he had a silver spoon. That don't mean he was just some rich ass kid or he probably wouldn't be fighting. So I hear, I hear where Cody's coming from, but at the same time, I respect TJ Dillashaw. You can't get mad at someone because they got a great family, and especially when that family instills a hard-ass work ethic in their child. That's literally like a perfect situation. 
you went through a little adversity enough to them to become a fighter, but you got a great work that worth work ethic and a great family behind you. I mean, TJ Dillashaw, low key, that's that's some dope shit, man. Um, and I don't feel like it's necessarily a silver spoon, but he continued to say he's trying to be a nice guy. He's trying to flip the script. He was a jerk, a bully. Now I have so much ammo, he wants to smooth it over, be the nice guy now. It's a little bit of a different situation. He can't be a prick now. You guys think that's what it is? I mean, before this fight, T Cody Garbrandt was the one that had the ammo. He was talking a bunch of shit on TJ about his team skills and, and all of that stuff and accusing it, like running TJ's name through the mud. I'm, t I'm talking about they made TJ look like an asshole. If TJ would have lost that fight, he would have fucking, his whole reputation might have been ruined. But since he was able to come through and win, it kind of made him look that much better and it made people kind of forget about that shit. But if he would have lost that title shot, he probably wouldn't have got no immediate rematch because he wasn't the champion. People would probably just believe Cody Garbrandt about uh, the steroid claims and ruining teammates' careers because Cody won. And, and that's really how a lot of this goes. Whoever wins, what they said is true because they're both denying what they're saying. Cody, TJ's like, I didn't say that shit. I didn't do that shit. Cody's like, yeah, you did. And whoever wins the fight is really who the fans are going to believe. So that was a much needed win for TJ Dillashaw in the first fight. But to be fair, the the way that the the way that the shoe is on the other foot in the trash talk, now TJ's the one talking shit. Cody's the one that's kind of humble coming back for his belt. It's also the same as far as what these guys have to fight for. TJ Dillashaw had everything to gain. He had to, he was trying to get his title back. It took him two number one contenders to get there. He needed that belt. He wasn't talking a lot of shit. That's what he was, his goal was. Now, this is Cody's goal now. This is his fucking life. He needs to get his life back. He needs to get his belt back. He needs to get his future back in the UFC. He got everything to fight for, for, for here. And he's coming in healthy on top of that. He's not flying around the world and all of these, uh, trying to get these back shots and stuff like that. Pause. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, this is going to be a great fight coming up this weekend at UFC 227. TJ Dillashaw, Cody Garbrandt, so hoot over Demetrius Johnson. You heard it here first. Hashtag and new. Both champions are getting dethroned. That's my prediction. I got Cejudo and Cody Garbrandt. They got so much to fight for. They got so much intangibles on their side. And also when it comes to being their skill set, they also have the skill set it takes to be the champion. Cody Garbrandt's Olympic level wrestling. He's been doing nothing but getting better for, since the last two years when he bought DJ. Cody Garbrandt, healthy back coming into this fight. A lot more to fight for. There's a lot going into these fights, and we know they've already got the skills. So with that being said, it is what it is. We'll be going live after work to talk about everything MMA. Let the full-time family know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you guys back here. We'll just say at 12 p.m. Eastern to make shit official. Let the full-time family know what you think in the comments. And before we go, shout out to all the full-time MMA white belts that have hit the subscribe button. Make sure you also hit the bell right next to it so you get notified every time we upload a new video. This is the hardest working MMA channel on YouTube. We provide daily updates. We do predictions, betting advice, songs, fantasy fights. We create all different types of MMA related content on a daily basis. We've also interviewed Aljamain Sterling, Sean O'Malley, Bruce Lutch Medio, and Felony Charles Bennett all in just one year as an MMA channel. We're still small, but we're definitely one of the fastest growing on YouTube. So with that being said, if you want to see even more videos like this, make sure you check out the full-time MMA dojo over on Patreon.com. There's more free videos over here, and you can also learn more about where this channel came from and see the goals of this channel as we continue to grow. So with that being said, whether you're a longtime subscriber or just a new person watching this video, I appreciate it. And we recently just got approved as an honor affiliate, so we got what you need. Whether you're trying to think clearer, work out harder, or sleep better. Check the links in the description for a 100% free trial of Alpha Brain, Shroom Tech Sport, or New Mood. I'm telling you, we got what you need. Links are in the description. See you on the next video. Da 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 da. It's the motherfucking D O double G.